flipbooks hold a special place in my heart because flipbooks are one of the things that made me love animation in the first place. I made tons of them as a kid. Some were better than others. Most of them just used simple stick figures. I made them on notepads, index cards. My brother and I once found a stack of old business cards in a trash can, so we took them home and made flipbooks. But of all the flipbooks I have ever made, one of them stands alone as the worst. And it is this one. I call it Backflip. The Backflip Flipbook. Try saying that three times fast. Backflip Flipbook, Backflip Flipbook, Backflip Flipbook, Backflip Flipbook. But what makes it my worst? Because I made it over 30 years ago and the animation looks like this. So I think it's time to do this character some justice and give him the backflip that he deserves. I remember sitting on the floor when I was a kid and using scissors and, and cutting the, the sides of the paper, stapling it together. You can see by the animation that I just kind of didn't know what I was doing, in a, so I just, I just did my best. There's also a little bit of inconsistency in the uh, face design kind of goes from that to that despite it being my worst flip book it's also kind of one of my favorites because it represents um trying something new and just doing something artistic and giving it your best shot with zero sense of self-doubt or self-consciousness i just noticed something about this paper I, I just realized what kind of paper this is if you look closely at the edge you can see these tiny little perforations so this is printer paper from the old dot matrix printer my family had i love that sound the paper back then had these edges to feed it through the printer and then you would tear off the sides of the paper and it would leave this edge. So step one, I'm going to look look at YouTube and try to find some video reference of someone doing a backflip that'll give me a good uh, reference to look at for the, the physics. And I'm going to start off with just a stick man just to kind of get the, the motion and the physics right and then I'll go back over the top of the stick man and I'm going to draw in my character over the top of the stick man. But right now I just need a basic skeleton to get the movement right. So what I'm doing is I'm going through the reference video one frame at a time, watching the movement, and then I'm trying to replicate that movement with a stick figure. Okay, so here's my initial sort of stickman pencil sketch, right? And it, it looks pretty cool and I could go with this uh, one thing I'm thinking is how it almost has like a slow motion feel right now because really I think I've gone a little overly detailed here uh, in just kind of how many how many frames I've used because this is a flip book a flip book is inherently just kind of like a lower frame rate so the first thing I'm going to do here I'm actually just going to start pulling out pages and uh, kind of seeing what effect that has. I almost feel like at this point that I could pull out like every other page. Um, so I'm gonna, let's, let's try that. Uh, this is another reason why you want to number your pages. So in case I wanna put some back, I know where they go. But right now I'm gonna go through and I'm just gonna pull out every other page and see what happens when we do that. So I'm literally just splitting this in half into two flip books. And then whichever one feels the best, then we can start kind of tweaking with that one a little bit. All right, so here are the, uh, the even pages, let's see. And already this one, you can see just kind of for the frame rate that a flipbook operates at, this has a bit more of the quick snappy feel that I would want in a flipbook. So really I just kind of did put twice the amount of detail into this flipbook in the, in the first place than I actually needed to. Um, It's kind of nitpicky, they're, they're, they're both very similar. There's something about, this one has a little bit of a nicer, uh, the anticipation, you know, when he swings his arms back right there, just there's something about the way that moves that feels a little bit nicer. So we're gonna go with this one and we're just cutting out half of the entire flip book, uh, but that's better because it feels better. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna look for a few spots where maybe I could exaggerate the, the poses just a little bit. I think maybe right, uh, right there when he swings his arms. I'll just kind of push that a little bit further, but it's it's feeling pretty good, really. It's just kind of how, how far back the, uh, the arms I want them to go. It's not like a, it's not a, a huge difference, but. I 
think maybe on this frame after, I'm gonna adjust these arms a little bit. Right now they're only up there for like one frame and I wanna have them hang there just one frame longer. So I'm gonna adjust. So instead of those going down quite as far, we're just gonna give them a little more, just like one more page of hang time up there, really. Let's see what that looks like. And this right here, between those frames, just kind of a big move. So because this distance is like pretty, pretty big right here, this would be a good spot to just kind of throw in a bit of a, bit of a blur frame. Yeah, see that little blur is kind of nice. So you get a little bit of extra hang time right there, and then, and then a big blur. Yeah, so this is feeling pretty good. So I've got my basic Stickman version that just kind of gives us the mechanics of, of what we're doing here. And now what I can do is draw the full character over the top of all the stick figure drawings. Okay, so here's my character. I tried to be really faithful to the first page of this flipbook and his design, his pants. He's got the pegged leg down at the bottom. And now we're gonna draw him on the top of all the rest of the frames. important to take breaks to eat when you animate, so I thought you guys could join me today as I eat some pad thai. Oh, hi, future Andy. I've once again come from the future to give you some helpful advice. Oh, good, thanks. I've done a thorough analysis on all my past videos, and no one wants to watch you eat that. Why yeah. <laughs> not? Because. Oh. But I do have something amazing to tell you about that your subscribers are gonna love in the future. Okay. In the future, there's this thing called YouTube Premium. You can watch YouTube with no ads and it has cool features like YouTube music and you can share it with all your family members. You're gonna love it. Yeah, actually, um, we have YouTube Premium already. Uh, we, it's available now. You do? What year is this? Uh, 2023? I really need to recalibrate this time machine. Yeah, I even have a special link in my video description where if people click it, they can try YouTube Premium free for a month. All right, well, uh, carry on then. I'll take that. Hey, give that back. Well, that was rude. Okay, I guess I'm gonna finish this hungry. Okay, now one thing I wanna do in the new version of this flipbook is add some secondary animation. So. As he's falling toward the ground, I want to have his shirt kind of like rise up. You know, as he's falling, his shirt would naturally kind of rise up. And then when he hits the ground, his shirt will settle. And that should kind of help also with the, the feel of kind of the impact of hitting the ground. You'll see his shirt like straighten out. So that should look kind of fun. I love getting to this part of the process when the pencil work is mostly done and then you get to go back over the top of it with ink and then erase the pencils and it just how nice and crispy it comes out looking when you're just left with the ink. The pants and shirt have been really fun. That's probably been the most fun part of this animation is just kind of thinking about the, the fabric and how it would move. So I'll finish drawing the rest of these heads then we'll take a look at it and then get to color. I'm also uh, right here, you can see I'm doing sort of a blur face uh, just because he's, he's rotating so quickly. So it's just kind of a light outline of his face. And then when we color it, that'll look, feel more like a blur. And now one of my favorite parts, erasing all the pencils. All right, now here it is just with ink and I'm really happy with how this is looking so far. The only thing is it kind of feels like he just has one leg because it's so sideways profile. Um, I want to add in just a hint of the other shoe. So we, we can see two arms as he's going around, but um, I feel like I need just a hint of that other foot. Otherwise it just feels like he's a one legged guy. There we go. Now it looks a little more like he has two legs. But let us not forget the ending because the original flipbook, oh, it had an ending. See, not only does he land the backflip, but then he turns toward camera and does a triumphant little hop up in the air. So I'm gonna film video reference of myself doing an awkward little hop up in the air because I'm good at awkward. Yep, that'll work. Thank you. 
I always love getting to this point when the animation is 100% finished, the ink outline is done, and all I have left is color. Uh, but before coloring, I like to do some color tests because once you start coloring, there's no going back. So I scanned one of the flipbook pages and then printed out a bunch of them so I can try some color ideas. And since I made the original flipbook in like 1989, maybe 1990, I think it would be fitting to go with some sort of neon kind of colors that have sort of an 80s feel. So like these reference pictures, I'm gonna go for something that feels kind of purpley with some pinks and blues. Mm -hmm. 